So the area I'm standing in now, it's nice and cool. It's a bit early, that's why you probably hear the roosters crowing and the people moving past me. Um, it's high traffic area, so. Just show you some of the area. Um, I was in the other day and thought I'd bring a map and just show you what I was talking about. So basically, I'm going down this ravine here. And like I stated before, this area between the Point Cruz line, which is here, Botanico River, which is here, is the most heavily fought over and longest contested area of the Guadalcanal campaign. So in the end of November, this became the front line. So the Americans are on these series of ridges here. The Japanese on a series of ridges here. So I'm gonna walk down and film some of these areas and just show you the amount of, of fighting back and forth and sea salt through here. Well, this particular map I'm looking at now is called the Push to Poha, 18th to 20th of November, 42. So that was one push. That was from the, the uh, 182nd Regiment and the 8th Marines. I'll show you another map. This one here, Second Marine Division. Advance, 12th to the 18th of January. Once again, we're in these ridges here. And I'll show you now. This is what we're looking at. So it's the 084. Going that way. Pan around. That's the American side the ridges above us now you can see this is heavily populated and that's hill 78 and the one november uh, attack by the fifth marines resulted in a medal of honor by one of the machine gunners the fifth marines anthony casametto was on that knoll basically where those trees are there the japanese did a massive amount of counter attacks uh, from the direction i'm in now and he was engaging a Japanese machine gun on that knoll there. So that was the front line for six weeks. Here's a good indication, this is 084. That's where the Japanese had the positions up there on the reverse slope. So the US Army and the Marines, spin around here, had to advance on the ridge here, which is 7880, straight down. Kids there saying hello. And straight up and over that, you can just see why they had a hard time. They tried it a few times um, from mid November, from the 18th to the 24th, they couldn't crack it. And then they uh, settled in for six weeks. This became no man's land. Here's some examples of the uh, bunkers in the area and the Japanese positions. You notice the coral there, and they just dug them straight into the coral. This was taken right after the uh, fighting in January, 1943. So this ravine I'm going into is between the two hills and over to the left is Hill 80 and 81. Scenes of many attacks by the US Army to 164. The second Marines and the eighth Marines all through November. So they're attacking from here it's hard to see because this area is so built up. And you can see a ridge up there. So they're attacking up there. The Japanese would have reverse slope defenses, which um, found a hard nut to crack for the Americans. So the Japanese would put their positions about 10 meters down the reverse slope and the Americans couldn't engage with direct fire on these ridges here. And then when they popped up over the ridge, the Japanese hit him at point blank range. The Japanese also put um, machine gun positions to shoot down the ravines. For example, I'll we'll spin back around. They would put their machine guns in these flat areas to shoot down the ravines to catch the Americans in infiltrating fire. So here I'm walking down the, uh, the ravine, so to speak. 
you can see the steepness of this ridge to my left. That's Americans' positions. Had to, once again, had to go down that thing. And once I clear these guys over here, just to get a good indication of what they had to go up. There you go. I'll stop here so it's taxi don't run me over. Alright, so I'll pan back to the left. There's the American positions. There's Japanese positions. And during the time of the, um, the war, this was all thick um, jungle in these ravines. Now the area I'm about to go to, as soon as I turn around this corner, became famous in October the 9th, 1942. It's actually known as the ravine. The ravine, um, where Chesty Puller's battalion basically decimated the Japanese battalion of the 4th Infantry Regiment. They called them this ravine. And Puller uh, described it as the machine for extermination. Um, a bit of a payback from uh, 17 from the the amount of men they lost on the 27th of September, roughly on Lane Kiki Ridge or Hill 84 there in the Mini Dunkirk. So we're entering the uh, ravine now. So Puller's men, I'll wait till I clear this corner. I don't know if you can see it. So Puller's men was up there. And I'm standing with the Japanese and caught like fishes in a trap. Now on the flip side of that, that's a young Japanese private down here. I'm trying to get water out of this stream behind me. cow opens up right there on that ridge directly on you. You try to move that way but 60 millimeter mortar fire cuts you off. You try to move behind you 60 millimeter mortar fire cuts you off. Okay let's try to run up that ridge. It's not gonna happen. There's a good book by Dean Ladd. It was a uh, platoon commander in the 8th Marine. They were talking about um, attacking against these Japanese positions. I know it's probably hard to see in the video. That is straight up. Straight up. There's some marine positions here. And that's positions that, um, that Puller's guys was on on the, uh, the 9th of October. And once again, many people think the Guadalcanal campaign is that we did Alligator Creek, we did Bloody Ridge, two big fights, and then the army came up and mopped up. That's very, very far from the truth. The majority of the heavy fighting Guadalcanal campaign, I keep saying it many, many times, was between the Matanacal River and Point Cruz. This ravine here saw a lot of action from September all the way to the end of the campaign in January. So it starts to open up a bit, less populated. Might give us a slight indication of how it looked. And October and uh, November 42. Straight up. There's a bridge. There's a creek. This creek's featured um, a lot in the accounts. The Japanese. Afternoon. It's locals. Um, Japanese were camped along this ravine. Um, about this creek, actually. Uh, Puller's men was up there. They caught them. This isn't a wartime bridge, this is a post war. I don't know. Oops. Are oh, you reckon, viewer? Oops. We're picking any room there. Is that a wartime? Just found a little track. This gives a bit of indication. Okay, take the plastic bottles out and all the garbage. But this would give a good indication of how it looked. It's 1942. So I'm down in the ravine now. And that's one of the Japanese used to love these ravines it's nice and cool and what do you notice overhead cover they camouflage in here from american um, airplanes because the, the uh, car ridges is barren once again you can have your bivouacs down here camouflage tops and um 
have a bit of water. Oh, there's a little skink or a gecko. Let me see. Oop, there he is. Cool fella. Look at the steepness of this. Imagine attacking her against that. Probably not under fire until you reach the top and you can't even breathe in and then you just get hit point blank with Japanese and then boom machine gun fire. Okay. So it's Hill 82 right there. Hill 80 um, threes to my right. Then it's the Hill 80 Sorry, 78, 80, going to Hill 66, American Lines. So where those towers are, 66, so we pan up. American Lines, American Lines. Now we're looking north. Japanese Lines. I think it's one of the battalions of the 8th Marines, I want to say the 2nd Battalion. They mentioned this, uh, this junction of ravines. I lost a lot of men where I'm standing now. They're talking about getting up these hills, getting up these ridges. The guy was getting trapped up there and they couldn't get him down because they exposed themselves to the Japanese fire. It had to be hell for the Japanese and the Americans to be down in this hole. The thing I just mentioned before, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. All right, that's about as far as we want to go on this one, but yeah, a lot of fighting in these ravines and on these hills. So next time you study the Guadalcanal campaign, try to look at the Point Cruise attacks. In fact, the 164th Regiment, um, this is where they lost the most guys on Guadalcanal, in this ravine and on these ridges around us. Hard to tell now, but you're looking south, so that's Hill 84. So doing the mini Dunkirk, this is the hill the Marines had to retrograde off. And during the Port Cruise uh, line battles, this is the area where the Japanese held their lines. Actually, it's going to be hard to tell too, but down the road here, the Japanese had a, a 75 millimeter um, mountain gun, had two actually, uh, in alcoves. Let's see if I can find a picture of it for you prove very effective against the Marines also. And these are also called pistol peats. So I think I've said many times before, any artillery around that landed on the Marines after a while was called, it was fired by pistol peat. Um, some people think pistol peat was an individual gun, but it was just a name for any um, gun, whether it be a 37 millimeter or up to 150 millimeter cannon. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Point Cruise Line. I encourage you to read about this important but often forgotten part of the Guadalcanal campaign.